As a data analytics professional who's have tried Jupyter, Google Colab, and a few other Python notebooks, I've always felt something was missing. And to be honest, I was never a big fan of Python notebook, that is, until now. Let me introduce you to Marimo, the next generation of Python notebook. Marimo is an open source reactive Python notebook. What makes Marimo stand out from other Python notebook is that it is executable as Python scripts, Git friendly, and can be used to build web apps. Being able to create a web app using a Python notebook is a game changer for me. I have been using Marimo for the past two weeks for my data analytics consulting work, and so far the whole experience has been smooth and I have no complaints. In this video, I will go through how to get started with using Marimo so you can try out the Python notebook for your data analytics projects on your own. To get started with using Marimo, let's create a Python virtual environment first to minimize conflicts among packages from different projects. To create a Marimo virtual environment on your terminal, run the command python mvenv followed by the virtual environment name. CD into the Python virtual environment directory and activate the virtual environment. To install Marimo, run the command pip install Marimo. Just like Jupyter Notebook, Marimo has its own command line interface. You can see the available commands using the Marimo help command. Marimo ships with several tutorials like how to work with Marimo's UI widgets, how to implement data workflow, use Markdown, etc. I will cover those topics in more detail in separate videos. To view the tutorial list, run the command Marimo tutorial help. And to view the tutorials, let's say the intro tutorial, run the command Marimo tutorial intro. On the left panel, you have different tabs. The view files panel is similar to File Explorer in VS Code, lets you to manage files associated with your project or notebook. Unlike Jupyter or Google Colab, which have their own file extension that is incompatible with standard Python files, Marimo notebooks are just regular Python files. For me, that's one of the key reasons I started using Python notebook for some of my app developments because I can easily integrate a Marimo notebook with my own modules. The variables tab lists all the variables, objects, and functions you defined in a notebook file. The data sources panel lists all the data frames in a notebook. The dependencies panel shows the relationship between different Marimo elements. A Marimo notebook essentially is a DAG, where nodes are cells and edges are data dependencies. On the dependencies panel, you have different views available to visualize the element relationships in graphs. The outline panel displays a hierarchical table of contents, organizing content into sections and subsections, making it easy to navigate the notebook. The documentation panel displays the doc string based on a Python function or Python module you selected. The logs panel displays the log message and print statements to help with debugging. The snippets panel displays a selection of predefined code snippet that can be directly inserted into your notebook. Currently, you cannot create your own code snippets. I am hoping they will add the feature eventually in future releases. The scratchpad panel lets you run throwaway code. This feature is extremely useful for testing functions and debugging. And lastly, 
the feedback panel to submit feedbacks. Now let's review Marimo notebook settings. Now let's check out what you can do with Marimo notebook settings. On the bottom, you have three icons, one for save the notebook, one for toggling the notebook view, and one for displaying the command palette. In the footer, you can view notebook's kernel, memory, and CPU usage. By default, Marimo runs notebooks automatically on startup. You can change the auto run setting to lazy by click the on startup icon in the footer. In Marimo, lazy loading automatically marks cells affected by module modifications as stale, letting you know which cells need to be rerun. An auto run automatically reruns cells affected by module modification. In the menu setting, you can publish the notebook as HTML page. Download the notebook in different file format, including as a regular Python file. Activate the helper panels, change notebook views, and a few other functions. Just like VS Code, Marimo has its own application configuration settings. I haven't really get a chance to experiment all the settings. The one I use the most is the width setting to make the content wider. You can also add a CSS style sheet to change how the notebook looks. I know some people like the dark theme look. On the display, you can set the color theme to dark. The change the cell output area lets you change if you want to display the block output above or below the code area. If you are using other package managers to manage Python libraries, you can choose your own package management manager. Marmo also has its AI assistant and AI code completion feature built in, which I will cover those in separate videos. I think that's everything I'm going to cover for the introduction video, just to give you a quick walkthrough to showcase the features and UI interface of Marimo Notebook. I will be releasing more videos on how to use Marimo for app development and data analysis, so stay tuned. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. See you in the next one.